After over 15 months of Russia's invasion, Ukrainian forces are stepping up long-awaited counteroffensive operations with the help of Western weapons. Ukrainian officials are hailing the recapture of multiple small villages, including four frontline villages in the eastern Donetsk region. These are among the first small successes in this counteroffensive. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maliar wrote on Monday in the Telegram that the Ukraine flag was again flying over the village of Storzhov. A day earlier, Ukrainian officials said three other small villages clustered together in the eastern Donetsk region had been liberated. Well, joining us now to give us the latest on the ground updates from Ukraine is Mr. Marian Zablotsky, a member of parliament in Ukraine. He joins us from Kyiv. Sir, welcome to Forum Daily. Thank you for having me. So where are we right now when it comes to the early stages of this counteroffensive? What are some of the latest updates you can give us uh, from the front line? Well, our troops were relatively successful in their initial stages. Uh, unfortunately, Russia has conducted a terrorist act by blowing up the dam uh, near Kherson, which has flooded the areas and has stopped at least part of the counteroffensive. Uh, our troops are very courageous. They are very brave. They managed to liberate some limited territory, but quite honestly, they are fighting with one arm behind their back. So they don't, do not have the air superiority. And unfortunately, their supply of armored vehicles is still relatively low. So what does the recapture of these smaller villages mean, not only for Ukrainian forces, but for the people in Ukraine in terms of both their morale and sentiment after over 15 months into this invasion? Uh, well, our morale is quite strong, but as you mentioned, it's still just five villages and there are hundreds of more to go. And unfortunately, those have been achieved with losses on our side as well. Uh, quite honestly, had we had uh, even 3% of the capacity of United States Army of Equipment, we would have probably liberated all of the captured area already. And in terms of military aid, we know the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, he paid a surprise visit to Ukraine this weekend. He announced $500 million in more military aid to Ukraine. Uh, so on that note, uh, what sort of impact has Canadian support in particular had in this war and the Ukrainian counteroffensive? Um, Canadian support has been one of that, until, at least in terms to relative terms, one of the biggest ones. So Canada, Lithuania, and others, some of the several other countries are the biggest supporters of Ukraine if you look at relative terms. But if you look to game changers, for example, United States, which has almost 9,000 A1 Abram tanks, uh, it is supplying generously 31 vehicles. We are grateful for 31 tanks, but quite honestly, Egypt has 1,400 A1 Abram tanks. Had we had even a portion of that, Russians would have been gone from our territory by now. So it's clear more support is needed. So what else is needed from Western allies in order for Ukraine to have a successful counteroffensive, sir? Uh, well, since the World War II, no country has made a major counteroffensive without air dominance, or at least at the level playing field. Uh, currently, F-16s, which are by far not the most modern fighters, but which are probably enough at least to to stop the Russian military superiority at the front lines, are badly needed. And so far, unfortunately, we have not been able to receive those. All right, Mr. Zablonski, a little over a minute left here, but in other recent news, we know the International Criminal Court, he, it's investigating the Kahovka Dam explosion, uh, which triggered flooding in southern Ukraine. Uh, so why is Russia bent on pinning the blame of this explosion on Ukraine? And where does Ukraine stand in terms of Russia's claims around this? Um, I don't believe that Russia deserves any attention to their claims because uh, anything that was done by them, according to them, it was done by whoever, NATO, uh, and whatever other forces, it shouldn't be even considered. You know, there, there comes a time after somebody cries a wolf 500 times falsely that you should not take care of that. But of course, they blew up the dam to stop the country offensive and they did it as Ukrainian offensive was read in the southern regions. All right, sir, before we say goodbye, what else can you share with us in regards to the next moves in this counteroffensive and what the West should be keeping their eyes out for? Could we expect maybe a deeper thrust into occupied areas after the capture of these frontline villages? Uh, I think the morale of Russian army is low and the morale of Ukrainian army is very high. And that's the main 
uh, weapon that we currently have, and I would just like to thank, as I did by here, uh, just introduced speaking to Ukrainian Parliament to extend our deepest thanks to Canada for all the aid that was provided to Ukraine. It's very significant, and it helped to save a lot of Ukrainian lives. All right, Mr. Zablonski, thank you again for giving us your time today on Forum Daily. Thank you for having me.